your time has come. All right, 10 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Beautiful Thursday. My gosh, it's just a nice day. The next few days, look, according to the weatherman, will look exactly like they do today. So if you've got a three or four day weekend uh, that you're looking forward to, you picked a good time. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here. It's beautiful here. Um, Rachel Abbott is on the phone. She is the United Kingdom's best selling independent author of the last five years on Amazon.com. And she's got a new thriller novel to tell us about. It's called The Sixth Window. Rachel Abbott. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you for being on our show. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me. Where are you? Um, I live in the Channel Islands. It's a group of small islands between England and France. Oh, my gosh. That just sounds so beautiful. Is it beautiful? It is. It's lovely. It is, and it's very warm and very pleasant at the moment. How did you end up there? Um, well, I lived in Italy for a while, and uh, and then I decided that as a writer, it wasn't very helpful to live in a country where people didn't speak the language that I was writing in. <laughs> I thought I'd better move back to be <laughs> to be amongst people who spoke the same language. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Um, and, and is the lifestyle of a writer what we always picture the lifestyle? We always picture it to be kind of reclusive and and kind of um, introverted. Is, is that is that you? Well, it is to a certain extent. Um, When I'm writing, which is pretty much all the time, during the day I'm very much um, a recluse. You know, this is is a very sociable island and people are frequently phoning up and saying, do you fancy meeting for coffee this morning? I said, no, can't possibly do that, I'm writing. And so I'm very reclusive um, during the day, but I make up for it in the evenings. The uh, the notes on your book, The Sixth Window, look very intriguing, and um, it's it sounds like it starts off with kind of a sad story and then develops from there. Is is uh, can can you kind of? I don't want to give too much away. Obvi- well, I haven't read the book, so I can't give too much away. I just have my notes here. But <laughs> how, how would you how would you uh, describe the book? Well, it's uh, The Sixth Window is the story of Natalie Gray. She's a young woman who is widowed when her husband is knocked over in a hit-and-run accident. And she also has a 15-year-old daughter, Scarlett. Um, And after 18 months of grieving for her husband, she and Scarlett move in with Ed Cooper, who was her husband's best friend. But she's only been there a few weeks, and she begins to suspect that there's a side to Ed that's a bit darker than she was expecting and she begins to fear for her daughter's safety so she decides she's got to get away but maybe by running from Ed she might just have put her daughter into greater danger. Oh my goodness and as we read the book I'm sure that we are on the edge of our seat as you write the book are you going through (laughs) do you go through the same thing that we go through as, as readers? Well, I hope so. I think it's quite important, actually, that you feel the same emotions that that the reader... I mean, if I'm not moved by it, then I've not got much chance of, of affecting my uh, my readers, have I? So I think it's really important that there are bits that make me shiver and there are bits that, um, that worry me. You know, I think right. that's a really interesting thought, that if, if you're cold and calculating about it, I think that would come across. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you, do you, do you uh, invent or create characters... Um, that, is it, what's harder to create a character that you despise or a character that you love ooh that's a really good question um, I think it's easier to create a character that has got sufficient flaws to be realistic but you love them in spite of it well, a it's bit quite easy to create a character that you really, really wow. despise. Oh, wow. Well, you still have that uh, a conflict between the ideas of the mom, Natalie, and the uh, daughter, Scarlett, because this really is true to life, because sometimes moms and daughters don't get along well. Absolutely, especially 15-year-old daughters. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the age, so, right? So in the book... Sorry. No, that's okay. So in the book... Uh, in the book, Scarlett um, thinks her mother is completely losing the plot. She thinks her mother is totally imagining everything, and uh, and so they, they do fall out about that. Oh, my goodness. So one thing I wanted to mention, just uh, technically, there's a little bit of a delay, and so that causes us to sometimes talk over you, and I apologize for that. It's not We don't intend to sound rude, but it's it's the delay. We can't always tell when one is done and the other is starting. You can't either, I don't think. Um, no, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry if I'm doing that as well. 
<laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I just found the book on Amazon, and I so I, t- I copied the uh, f- the cover photo and put this on the podcast that we're doing right now, so people can see the cover of the book. Um, oh wow! Do, are, are you a very? It sounds like you're a very prolific writer. You're doing a lot of writing. Well, I, I, there are some writers who seem to be able to polish off two or three books in a year, and I I generally write one book a year, but they're quite. They're quite thick books with quite a lot of pages, and um, and also I, they're quite complex plots. So I have to do quite a bit of research as well, and uh, like to make sure that I've got all my facts right and decent locations, and just to make them more interesting. Than that each one has to be very different from the previous one. And uh, throughout the book, the characters. Uh, personalities aren't always as they seem, so you always keep an an aura of mystery about them. Because once you think you've got a character pegged, it's not. <laughs> well, I like to think so because I think that's quite realistic. You know, how well do we really know other people? And uh, people always surprise each other, don't they? So. I think that it's quite important that um, there are some people who are not what you think they are. I just I just went through the books. Do you also write in German? I don't write in German. My books are translated into 20 languages. Oh, okay. So okay. Um, my, my agent sells the rights um, overseas, so they're in lots of different languages. I see. You have such good ratings. Uh, I, I mean, you've got five stars, four and a half stars on almost every book. You've got thousands of people leaving reviews. You are really a superstar. Do, do you just <laughs> do you prefer to be independent as opposed to uh, writing for a publisher? Um, it, it sort of that's how it started. I started off very much um, doing it independently because I didn't actually have any plans on having my book published to start with. I did it for my own pleasure and enjoyment, and then uploaded it to the Kindle because it was the easy option. And then it went really well, and um, and I picked up an agent, a brilliant agent, and she said, "Look, this is working for you. So for the time being, stick with what you're doing, and then we'll review the situation as time goes by." So wow. I've certainly got nothing against traditional publishers. I think they do a fantastic job, and um, it's just that for the moment, that seems to have been working well for me. Yeah, but I'm guessing they're at your door. I'm guessing they're kind. Con- Contacting you all the time, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, my agent, not me so much. But, oh, uh, I got you. Okay, but, uh, okay. Well, you're most excellent in writing real life because in this morning's news, Larry had an item of a 15 year old girl's body that was found, and now they're investigating oh. that. I thought the same thing, yeah, in when Orlando, I, yeah. and like this is, you know, almost oh, parallel dear. with what your your book is. Yeah, I do try. I do try to not make it too disturbing in the end, really, because you know, don't want people having nightmares. So I don't really write gory stories either. They're more psychological. So it's more about um, it's more about what's going on under the surface, about why people are doing things than than what they're doing, really. And that's what's really marvelous about your writing, because sometimes we have sympathy, and sometimes it's just the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you don't know who to trust, do you? That's exactly. <laughs> so what? what is the name of the islands you're on right now? I'm looking on the map. I'm looking for your island. Um, I live on Alderney, which is a very small island. So from the map of the Channel Islands, you'll see Jersey and Guernsey. I found them. are quite big. Yeah. So Alderney is north of Guernsey, uh, very close to the French coast. It's only eight miles off the French coast and very small. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Just... Uh, What's it called? It's only three and a half miles by a mile and a half. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, it must be tiny. Yeah, I don't even see the name yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, I'll, have to, I'll have to look for it later. Oh, my gosh. Well, it sounds beautiful. So you can walk to the beach, uh, I'm guessing? Yeah, I live right. So I live in um, um, a, a fort. So back in the 1850s, 1860s, Queen Victoria built a load of forts on Alderney to protect um, the UK from the French from the French fleet and so there's about eight forts on the island and I live in one that's been converted which is beautiful right on the beach oh uh, my oh okay I want to get one hotel, <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I still can't find a hotel alright well I guess we gotta go um the book is getting rave reviews everywhere, and, and I want to uh, make sure that you know the title again before we say goodbye to Rachel Abbott. Uh, it's called The Sixth Window. It is a thriller novel. Rachel, what an honor to have you on our show. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Um, and you have a website also, right? 
Yeah, I do. It's um, uh, www.rachel-abbott, that's A-double-B-O-double-T dot com. Okay. And thank you so much for giving me some time on your show. Thank you, Rachel. That was awesome. We'll be right back. Studios, this is W-O-C-A, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. President Trump says he wants China's help to crack down on North Korea's nuclear program. He said President Xi in several conversations has committed to that. I said the way you're going to make a good trade deal is to help us with North Korea. On Russia, President Trump said it's certainly possible, though probably unlikely, that Russia had advanced knowledge of last week's chemical attack in Syria. He also acknowledged that U.S.-Russia relations may be at an all-time low. Fox News' John Decker, the president just tweeting that things will work out fine with Russia. Florida is still in a state of emergency because of wildfires. Tom Lennon's in Pasco County, north of Tampa. From my driveway, you could see the, um, the, f- the flames and everything jumping. Some 100 wildfires reported across Florida. Lawyers for Bill Cosby have lost a bid to question Cosby's accuser before his sexual assault trial, saying she should have been forced to testify at a preliminary hearing. Fox- 